and and let's say that I have and, and let's an say that, that I um, have the district in that, that um the district well, then you're going to have to use the well then you're going to have to use the data entry so here nothing's pre-populated because there's not a template so I do have to fill in everything so I want to start with somebody referred the student and let's just say there was a fight in cafeteria. As you can see here, this is a free form text box. I type in the title, type in the description. Um, how about throwing food in? On campus, I can be as detailed as I want. The prepared by, I can put my name. And then down here is where I'm going to attach the participants and also the incident elements. Okay, so let's start on the left side. Who does this um, incident need to um, be linked to? So I'm going to click on the plus. I'm going to use, let's just say it's the same troublemaker. This student here. And he was definitely an offender. Okay. Then we'll click on add again. And let's just say that he punched one of his best friends. So I can search for the student's name again, click add. And this time, this poor fella is a victim. Okay. Now, Kind of like an I now, I don't know if you guys remember, but in incident reporting and I now you can for victims and um, witnesses and so forth, you know, you can freeform type. So you can search by for students, search by staff, because sometimes, you know, teachers might get hurt. At this, so they would need to be listed as a victim of an incident, possibly. Um, so you got you can search for students and staff, but I now also gave you ability to do an other so that you can just type in, um, you know, a person's name. So a witness, for example, might be the, the house across the street, you know, um, the neighbor, next door neighbor next to the school or something. They might be a witness to um, gun possession at your school or knife possession, you know, they might saw something. So they might be a witness. Well, they're not necessarily, a, you know, they're not a student nor a teacher. And so you need to be able to freeform type their name. Um, sometimes things happen at football games, for example, and then, um, you know, you might have to tie it, um, one of your students to one of your non-students that is at another school, enrolled in another school. So things like that might happen where you might need to uh, freeform type. So you can, you can always search for student and staff, okay? But there is a create other down here where it just allows you basically to freeform type a person's name. So let's just say that the student, um, Peyton's grandmother was having lunch with him and was a victim also with the fight in the cafeteria. So I can put her name, let's say her name is Gladys Jones, okay. None of the other information, if you want, if you have it, you want to track it, that's fine. But this allows me to freeform type. So if it's a, if it's a non-student um, that came up to my school and started a riot with some of my kids or et cetera, you know, or a parent that's involved, anything like that, that, that is basically not a student, not a staff, you can always type it in. And then I'm going to say that this was the grandmother and she was also a victim. here and you see the little icons are a little different okay um so now i have my offender and i have my two victims okay now i'm gonna go and build the incident itself so i'm gonna go over here to the plus symbol 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a behavior. So what is the behavior? Fighting. Okay. I can type out what kind of fighting, how long it lasted, you know, anything about the fight in this comment box. I'm going to mark that as a uh, primary behavior. And then I'm going to go ahead and also add my actions. So I'm going to do out of, let's do, no, I'm sorry. Let's do suspended pending, okay? And I'm gonna say that this student's gonna be suspended for this many days. All right, now it's all a matter of uh, drag and drop. And so this behavior, I want to go under Leland's name as an offender. So I can drag and drop it right on top. Okay. You notice that the behavior stays here. So if there was another, typically, you know, fighting, like I said, there's usually two offenders. And so if there's another student's name here, I'm going to pick someone else. I'm going to add that person as another offender. I just found out that there were two of them that was fighting against Peyton. So this behavior here, I can also drop to Sadie. And if you notice, it's a little finicky. So you need to make sure you drop it right on the uh, text itself. Okay, so now Leland has um, a fighting behavior, but so does Sadie has a fighting behavior. And if you can go on and on and on, there's three offenders, four offenders, that behavior stays here, you drag and drop. Now action, once you have drag and drop an action, it does disappear from the elements and you have to add it again. Um, this is, you know, the only logic I guess I can explain that as is actions would be different for each student possibly. So this action here, which is suspended pending expulsion um, that I built, was an action for Leland's fighting. But maybe this is the first time Sadie has ever gotten in trouble, and her action might be just out of school suspension, not pending expulsion, just straight up out of school suspension, and maybe her days are only two days. So the action, you know, consequences can be slightly different. So once I drag and drop this again right over that text okay so i can drag and drop this action right under it and so how this trees out is that this is leland is fighting and he got suspended pending expulsion you notice my action went away so in order to give an action to sadie i would have to go back to add action and like i said hers might be a little bit my more my you know just not as severe so I can go back, I can still suspend her, but maybe I only suspend her for two days. And it's not pending expulsion either. Sorry. All right, so I added that element. Now I can click on this element and I can drag it right under Sadie's fighting and now Leland has suspended pending, but Sadie has out of school suspension. Okay. So going down here, remember the fly out on attendance, it doesn't automatically post attendance, so you got to fly it out. Okay. So uh, for Leland, I'm going to click on that. What do I want Leland to get for these, these, these days, this date range from 913 to 916? So he's going to be OSS for all of these days, okay, in all of his classes. So it's out of school suspension, set it all for the date range, click OK. Then I got to do the same thing for Sadie. Sorry, I don't have her enrolled in any classes, but I would set all for the range, and then I'll see her schedule, and OSS will show up for her. I click OK, and then it will pre-mark so her teachers are aware she would be um, out of school suspension. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit Incident. So now let's fast forward a little Excuse bit. Me. Yes. Could you go back for one quick second and go back to where you were, start the attendance part again, please. 
at the bottom? Yes, please. Down here? Okay. Little, yeah. So um, because I have the mapping, okay, so it has to make okay. sure you got the mapping done for your um, action codes to map to your related attendance codes. Mm -hmm. So in order for this area to even show up, so if you're in it and this area doesn't show up, that means mm -hmm. you don't have things mapped. Okay. So you only see it if it's mapped in your in your um, system setup. Okay. Your school setup. I mean. Okay. All right. So here. And that's by the district, right? The mapping is actually at school level. Oh, like, is right. that meaning that we just picked a, an action? Is that what you're talking about with mapping? Or is that something we have to do in the setup? It's in the school setup. Oh. It's in the school setup. I remember you going through everything with the district setup. Yeah, and so um, do you have the document? I don't have it printed. Okay, it's actually on page two. Page one is the district okay. setup, and then page two is the school setup. Okay, I'll write that. Down. Right, Thank two you. things you need to do in order for this action, um, this little attendance area to show up. Okay. And then you do that little fly out for each student. How did you get to the fly out? It's this little icon right here. Uh, that's what I missed. Okay, yep. all right. So when you click that, um, you know, it's going to tell you that it wants to do an o OSS for the student for this date range. And then you, you just say set all and it set OSS for all those dates in all of his classes. You click OK and that's how attendance gets posted. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just remember, it doesn't do it automatically. So you got to do that fly out for each of the kids listed. Mm hmm. Okay. And then you submit incident and all that data is saved. Okay, so let's fast forward a minute. And remember that I um, suspended pending expulsion Leland. So let's go back to that same um, incident again. I'm just gonna pull it back up. And now it was determined that um, he's going to be expelled. So as you know, just like in INAL, this pin, this suspended pin expulsion is just a temporary code. It can't stay there. You have to end up deciding what was the final outcome for Leland. Was it only suspended or was it expelled? Okay. So you would need to change this temporary code to basically um, after the committee meets and, and all that process is done, um, then you go back in here and you modify um, this action form, okay? Just remember, pending expulsion is just a temporary code. So let's just say that uh, the school and everyone decided that the student needs to be expelled, okay? Then what I wanna do is um, how we handled it in I now was I always kept the suspended part because he was suspended for five days or four days and then his expulsion starts after Hearing to plus. So I'm going to still track those. So I'm not going to simply change this to expelled because he wasn't straight up expelled. He was suspended for five days, then he was expelled. So I want to be able to track both of those actions. Okay. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to add an action. So the final decision was he is going to be expelled and he's going to be expelled starting. September 27th through, let's say, December 1. So he's expelled for that duration. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this action again right over the text. Okay. So now I have an expulsion that has a different date range than my suspended pending. I still need to handle this suspended pending. So I'm gonna click on this little pencil icon to edit this. Okay. I'm gonna click on that little pencil icon and remember those those four days that I suspended him, I'm gonna change this to out of school suspension because that, that is still true. I suspended him from 913 to 916. It was pending expulsion 
But now the final outcome is from this whole entire incident is that he was still suspended from 913 and 916 and his expulsion started 927 to 12 one. So nowhere now I have that pending temporary code that will still error out when you do your search. So you make sure you need to go back and um, update it to what the final verdict was. Now, if he ended up not being expelled, that he ended up just being suspended and um, nothing else, those four days were enough. Talk to mom. We all decided it would be best he stayed in school. So let's just um, go back over here. Let me just change this back a minute to show you basically what I would do if it if the final verdict was just um, suspended and not expelled. I wouldn't need this to add this additional expulsion action over here. All I would this have to do is she's, she's got some age in there. Amber LeBlanc is on. Okay, so I would go back over here to suspended pending expulsion, click on the little pencil icon and it was decided that he would just be out of school suspension. So the 913 to 916 is A-OK. -okay. I took the pending off. The final decision was that it was just out of school suspension. Now, one, one thing that I wanted to um, note is whenever you change an action for any reason, you remember back when we were talking about the, the district codes where you can kind of uh, put in why you made a change to that action kind of as a documentation. So um, maybe it was a parent's request. You know, we had uh, the, the hearing and the parent request. And basically, I updated it from, from suspended pending expulsion to straight up just out of school suspension. Um, for whatever reason, and then I can document, you know. Blah, blah, blah. So at any time where you have an action, you can go back into it. And if you make a modification, whether you increase the suspension days or decrease the suspension days, you can always um, drop down and kind of document why you did that. And so you can get with your, um, your district and say, you know, what needs to be in here typically? Is it um, maybe updated per principal or updated um, per superintendent? You know, different um, reasons why, you know, you would update this action for whatever reason. You know, maybe it's the um, juvenile probation officer, you know, anything like that. Um, you can drop down and kind of pick your code. So if something did change, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to change, add back that expulsion for Leland. And I'm going to go back and expel him from the 27th through December 1. I'm going to drag and drop. OK, this is a new action that requires a new attendance posting. So when I added this expulsion, if you remember originally, I only had two down here. It was just Leland and Sadie for the out of school suspension. But then I added a new action. Remember, it doesn't automatically do it. Auto it doesn't automatically post the attendance. So you got to use that little fly out. And so, so if I wanted to go ahead and pre mark him as expelled, so all his teachers were know that he's not going to be in class from 927 to 12 one. I can go in there and I can set all and it will basically assign all those dates for that entire date range um, with an expulsion. And then I can submit. Okay. So that's two ways you can get incident in. 
If you have templates, you can use quick incident. Otherwise, you'll use detailed incident. Okay, okay so that's some, uh, a page on my documentation as well. And the last page is just how do you look at incidents, um, you know, maybe as a, as a principal or as an AP, you might want to look at um, globally, what does your uh, discipline look like at your school? As I started putting in data, it starts populating up here. So I can filter out um, my summary by behavior or by action. So if I wanted to know how many, um, how many incidents have occurred and what they are by behavior, by the infraction, I see there's one defines of authority and one fighting. 